a specific quote, though not the only such example, on the prohibition against magic of any kind from the monotheist scriptures is Deuteronomy 18. There shall be none among you who sacrificially burns son or daughter, no one who practices divination, tells fortunes, interprets omens, or is a sorcerer, or a charmer, or a familiar, or wizard, or necromancer. From Deuteronomy 18, verses 10 through 11. While devastatingly specific, in its condemnation of magic in all forms as were practiced at the time, the scripture remains confusing and incomplete. The literature of this era in the scriptures is meant to mimic the interpretation of the law of irony as proof for the existence and will of God. As such, there is a proliferation of alliteration punnery, and rhymes that pepper the texts with colorful gems of pure onomatopoeic, perfectly harmonic cadence. The Hebrew letters form Semitic words that relate to one another like lyrics in a song, and which can be understood almost only, if not best, in its original language. Here we see Hebrew is pronounced Keshef in Semitic, meaning sorcery. Likewise, Kabar means to join, implying to cast a spell by making pacts. The word Kesem is a divination for seeing the future. One who does any of these is called Yidianai, a wizard. However, what this monotheist scripture is outlawing is obviously something being practiced previously to its prescription against, e.g. what monotheist religions label magic. These arts lumped up such were the practice of the predecessor and foe of monotheist religions, e.g. pantheism. The study and practice of these arts of magic was outlawed by monotheism at a time when monotheism was first breaking forth from the pantheist religions of the era. At the figurative heart of monotheism's argument against magic as the practice of pantheism was the association of it with bloodletting or petro rites. Petro, Latin for stone, refers here to the herms, or mile markers along ancient roads that were fit with a crotch-height erect stone phallus. The herms of the Mediterranean and the mineheers of Europe were originally left over from an early Neolithic era of human development. Although their original purpose as distance markers along migrational routes of Paleolithic hunters was forgotten by the time of Deuteronomy, the practice of offering a bloodletting sacrifice at these locations was not. Thus, not only a few, but all of these monumental stone intersections were bloodied. The monotheist scriptures early on introduced the theme of juxtaposing life as blood and knowledge as vegetable forms of offering. They state that Cain, whom had offered unto the monotheist God a burnt offering of herbs, slew Abel his brother in a fit of jealousy for the monotheist God favoring Abel's offering of burning gore. Following from this, the sacrifice of blood is further associated with pantheism 
in the form of human sacrifice being less preferable to the monotheist God than animal sacrifice. Let us consider a concise recounting of the history of the bloodletting sacrifice in a series of paraphrased quotes from Wikipedia, the online open source encyclopedia. Quote, in Judaism, a sacrifice is known as a korban, from the Hebrew root korb, meaning to approach or draw near. Sacrifices were either blood sacrifices, animals, or bloodless sacrifices, grain and wine. Blood sacrifices were divided into the ola sacrifices, burnt offerings in which the whole animal was burnt, guilt offerings in which part was burnt and part left for the priest, and peace offerings in which similarly only part of the animal was burnt. There are three different subdivisions of slaughter offering. Thank offering, made in response to an unexpected positive change in circumstance, Votive offering, made in response to a positive change in circumstance when a vow in hope of such a change had previously been made. Free will offering, more spontaneous slaughter offerings. A holocaust is a religious animal sacrifice that is completely consumed by fire. The word derives from the ancient Greek holocaustos, which is used solely for one of the major forms of sacrifice. Holocausts are conducted at night without wine and offer black-hided animals at a low altar with their heads directed downwards. In all these they are opposed to the commensal sacrifice given to the Olympian gods. Some of the ritual laws, or at least portions of these laws, involve two similar animals being brought to the priest, one being killed in a certain manner and its blood sprinkled onto the sinner, the other being sent away. Such rituals involve the idea that sin can be transferred from the sinner to the living animal via the blood of its dead associate. Shechita is the ritual slaughter of mammals and birds according to Jewish dietary laws. The act is performed by severing the trachea, esophagus, corroded arteries, and jugular veins using an extremely sharp blade, chalef, and allowing the blood to drain out. The knife used for Shechita is called a chalef by Ashkenazim or a Sakin. In previous centuries, the Halaf was made of forged steel, which was not reflective and was difficult to make both smooth and sharp. In the mid-1700s, the Baal Shem Tov, fearing that Sabbateans were scratching the knives in a way that was not detectable by normal people, introduced the Hasidish Halaf, the Hasidish Halaf differs from the previously used knife in that it was made from molten steel and polished to a mirror gloss in which scratches could be seen as well as felt. The new knife was controversial and was one of four reasons listed in the Brody Cherem for the excommunication of the Hasidim. Eid El Adha, or Festival of Sacrifice, or Greater Eid, is an important religious holiday celebrated by Muslims worldwide to commemorate the willingness of Abraham, Ibrahim, to sacrifice his son. The narration is referred to as the Echedah in Hebrew and as the Dabi in Arabic. 
Many Bible scholars have suggested this story's origin was a remembrance of an era when human sacrifice was abolished in favor of animal sacrifice. The Deus Ex Machina, salvation in some versions of Ephigenia, who was about to be sacrificed by her father Agamemnon, and her replacement with a deer by the goddess Artemis, may be a vestigial memory of the abandonment and discrediting of the practice of human sacrifice among the Greeks in favor of animal sacrifice. References to animal sacrifice appear in the New Testament, such as the parents of Jesus sacrificing two doves, Luke 2.24, and the Apostle Paul performing a Nazarite vow even after the death of Christ, Acts 21.23-26. In 330-340 A.D., Alexandrian bishop Epiphanius claimed to have defected from a sect called the Phibianites, which were claimed to worship a snake, have sexual intercourse during religious ceremonies, and eat aborted fetuses, considered to be the perfect mass. In later Scandinavian practice, human sacrifice appears to have become more institutionalized, and was repeated as part of a larger sacrifice on a periodic basis, according to Adam of Bremen, every nine years. Adam von Bremen recorded human sacrifices to Odin in 11th century Sweden at the temple of Uppsala, a tradition which is confirmed by Gesta Denorum and the Norse sagas. End quote. So we see that ritual human sacrifice continued in the West a very long time after the inception of monotheism's apostatizing it as an abhorrent practice of black magic. It was practiced by the Norse Vikings around the middle of the feudal Dark Ages and mixed with Apocrypha brought back during the Crusades to ignite the Inquisition against the Albigensian heresy e.g. the practice of pantheist magic in general. While there is much written in the histories about the blood libel against the Jews, or the false accusation of them continuing annual ritual human sacrifices today, there is no memorial of all the names of those tortured and burnt alive for failing to guess the question's expectation of a confession of guilt before the third degree. To say that ritual human sacrifice still occurs anywhere on earth now among the monotheist religions is considered criminal because, for so many centuries, the Ashkenazi Semitic exiles of Roman Judea were themselves sacrificed upon the flame. Just as the beginning of the shift in monotheism toward animal rather than human sacrifice began with the moral of the scripture on Abraham's preparation to sacrifice his son to the monotheist god, the blood libel curse on monotheist human sacrifice began contemporary to the beginning of monotheism shift away from bloodletting sacrifices of any kind and toward the replacement of it with bloodless offerings of food and drink instead. This was the era when the scriptures described the Christian Messiah, Jesus the Christ from Nazareth, being criminally tortured and crucified as a human sacrifice to the monotheist God by the Jerusalem Sanhedrin. The scriptures describe the Sanhedrin agreeing to an offer made by Roman procurator of Judea, Pontius Pilate, prior to the crucifixion of Jesus, that the blood of their human sacrifice should be not on the hands of pantheist Rome, but on the heads of the Jerusalem Sanhedrin, when they cried, His blood be on us and on our children. This curse accounts in the scriptures for the historical expulsion of the Hebrew Palestinian Semites from their religion's holy lands, Judea and Israel. <laughs> 